religion, relationship, righteousness, and redemption. Have you ever thought about any of those? Hey, I'm John G. You're in the shelter home. Welcome. Anytime that I'm reading my Bible or doing a Bible study or reading a book, I have things come to mind and it just, you know, it overwhelms, not really overwhelms me, but it's one of those deals where I try to make sure that I remember, and I just kind of feel like it's what God's put on my heart for that week. And then, then on top of that, it seems like everything that I read, either in the Bible or in the book that I'm reading at the time, it all cor- it all correlates. It all comes together to one or in one. So, you know, you hear a lot of people. You know, when you ask somebody, you say, "Well, are you a godly man?" Well, I'm religious. No, 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 no. Are you a godly man? You say, "Hey, do you have a relationship with your God?" Do you have a relationship with your religion? How about righteousness? Does your does your religion or your relationship have any type of righteousness? And if it does, how did you get to that righteousness? Or does your religion or your righteousness have any type of redeeming qualities? You ever heard that? Oh, That guy, man, he has some redeeming qualities. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Well, let's talk about those today. So I went into Webster's Dictionary, and that's where I've got my definition from. And religion, it says, uh, relating to or manifesting a faithful devotion to and acknowledge ultimate reality or deity of relating to or devoted to religious beliefs or observations. Now, it doesn't say it deity, okay? What it, you, you, we, got, we have to name what, what our deity is. We have to name what our religious beliefs are. What is your religion? Well, I put before you there is only one religion, and I, I don't look at it as a religion. I look at I look at Christianity as being a Christian. It is Christianity. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that's where I get that from. I hate I, I, I try to never use the word religion or religious in any of my vocabulary at any time. That's just me. I'm not saying it's wrong for you. I'm just saying it's me because. And also, religion is doing something, you know, consecutively. You can do anything religiously. You can worship Buddha religiously. You could, you, you could, you could worship um, any false idols religiously. It's just you. It, it's it's what you do consistently. So what is our passion? What consumes our thoughts? Where are our priorities? God, family, and then everything else should be our priorities in our life. When Chad was um, when Chad was at, at uh, football university, FBU, his coaches always told him that the priority was, was faith, family, and football. Faith, family, and football. And that's the way I believe it ought to be. And have I always been that way? Absolutely not. You will, you will ne- I, I will never point the finger at anyone except for myself. So let's look at relationship. 
is the state of being related or interrelated, the relation connecting or binding participants in relationships such as kinship. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. A specific instance or type of kinship. A state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. A romantic or passionate attachment. So, in our relationships, whether it be with Believe it or not, we have relationships with the people we come in contact with every day. I have a relationship with the with the guys at my work, at my at my branch. I have a relationship with 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 uh, with my customers. I have actually made the statement to some to folks within my company that there's one word missing from our statement. And that is relationship. Customer service is there. And I've said, we need to add the word relationship. And here's why that's so important. When things get bad, or when service may not be the way that it needs to be, or let's say you need to get something for a customer that takes you a little longer than what you had told them it would take, or there was a problem in shipping and something got um, either either got damaged, destroyed, lost, or whatever. What's going to help you in the situation? What, what's going to help you with that customer when you go to tell them that? If you have a relationship with that customer and you've been providing the, the, the customer service that 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 they're looking for, and you've been a, you've been a great so, you know, you, you've been, you've provided great service to them. And through that, you found things in common with your customer. And so when you go to them and you say, Hey, uh, Mike, man, that, uh, grinder, I don't know what's happened to what happened with it. It's getting, it's gotten hung up. It's gotten hung up in, 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 uh, in freight and shipping somehow. As soon as it gets here, I'll give you a call. Hey, no problem, John. No problem. We understand, man. And because those guys know that when I have their product, they have it. So when you go to build a relationship with your wife, your wife needs to know, or your girlfriend needs to know, or your significant other needs to know. I'm not even you forgive me, I'm not even using the word significant other. Your wife needs to know. Your children need to know that you are going to that you are striving to be the absolute best husband, the best father, the best grandfather that you can possibly be. And I haven't always done that. I'll just be totally honest with you. My wife, my kids, they'll all tell you. That I'm very through my life, through them growing up, through their childhood, I was very critical. I was hard on my boys. I wasn't the most positive person, wasn't the most positive influence. I could always find the negative and not the positive. As a matter of fact, one of my prayers this week, whenever I'm having my devotion time with me and the Lord, I was just going back and thinking and asking the Lord, you know, or talking to the Lord about why I have been that way. Why am I on the defensive all the time? Why, why am I so negative? Whenever, and for the most part, I am a pretty positive person. And uh, I don't know if it's, you know, the thoughts come to me for not forgiving people in my past that, that, Seriously, have done things wrong? Have I maybe not forgiven myself? Have I not? Maybe I, I've never really forgiven my mother. That's a whole other podcast. 
I, I don't know. That's why I was praying about it, that, that God would show me um, that I can correct these things. So in that kinship, you know, when you marry your wife, the relations that you have, you share intimacy, a romantic, passionate intimacy. You have that attachment to, with one another that you don't share with anybody else. And when you, when, when you and your significant, your, your wife, that you've had this romantic and passionate relationship with and you produce an offspring, you are connected to that person. That's, that's, that's your genes. That's your DNA that you've created. That you have that love and compassion that, that needs to be there for them and they, and they for you. So when Christ died upon the cross for you and me, he did it because he loved us. When we get married and we have these romantic and passionate attachments and relationships with our wives or with our husbands, wives with their husbands, there is a there there is a love and a relationship there that no one else participates in but when Christ died upon the cross for you and me the love and the sacrifice that he made at that time to where, like in John 3, 16, where it says, whosoever believeth in it, believeth in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Once we believe in him and we put our trust in Christ and we, we really turn over and devote ourselves to him and what he has for us, we become part of that family. We have that passionate um relationship, that intimacy. Listen, what Christ did for us is evident in what the apostles died. And we'll get there in a minute. Mark 12, 33 says, and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. John 4, 7, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So here, let me tell you something. If you don't love your brother, unless I'm going to tell you, you may not like him, but you better love him. You better love your sister. Your neighbors, you better love them. You may not like them, but you better love them. And if we love one another, we're going to have compassion on one another. We've got to learn to accept each other for who we are. And when we do that, it's going to allow us to share the love of Christ says, no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hear that? If we love one another, God dwells in us. And if that happens, his love is also perfected in us. Man, what would this world be if we all had God's perfect love living inside of us? <clears throat> John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. That is from Christ. That's Christ's commandment. To love one another. How hard is that? Well, loving somebody sometimes can get pretty hard. That's my wife. She's married to me. 
Has our relationship, has my wife always loved me? If I had to tell you the truth, probably no. Well, I'd say she's always loved me, but has she always liked me? No. And she'll probably tell you the same thing. Many times in, my, in, our, in our marriage, in our relationship, I'm sure there are times that she, that, 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 that she couldn't stand the, the, the ground I walked on, but she still loved me. There are times our kids just tear the hearts out of our chest, but you know what? We still love them. We don't like them real, you know, a whole lot at the moment. We're aggravated with them. Sometimes we're even disgusted with them. Or we're just, we get disgusted with ourselves. But we can't stop loving each other. We can't stop loving one another. That is, that, that's given by Christ. That's a commandment that he gave us. You know, then if we focus on the fruits of the Spirit, I'll probably close out with this later on. But if we focus on the, what, what, what I've always known as the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, Paul lists nine specific behaviors. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and self-control that are the results of the work of the Holy Spirit in, in a Christian's life. Now you think of that. Let me read that again. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that are the result, the result of what? It's the result of the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us. That whenever you ask the Lord, or we ask the Lord to come into our life to be our personal Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit. Now, there are some denominations or some folks believe that you don't re receive the Holy Spirit until you're baptized. I'm not here to argue doctrine. I'm here to tell you that either way, call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior. Get in the baptism waters and one way or another, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And God, if you allow him and the Holy Spirit, is going to make the change in your life that you need in order to to make these changes. But if we just think if we put these things into our marriages today, or into our relationships with people at work, or our neighbors next door, that we remember to have the love, we have joy, that we have peace, we have forbearance, we have kindness, we have goodness, we have faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I've been known to lose my cool. Who has it? We've got to learn to be gentle. We've got to have faith. Show our faithfulness. Have faith in one another. So the next one I want to talk about is righteousness. Webster says it's acting in accord with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin, morally right or justifiable, arising from an outraged sense of justice or morality. Arising from an outraged sense of justice or morality. You know, if we get what we if if we get what we deserve, we're going to we'll we'll get we'll get the baptism all right. Yeah. Yeah. Our father, the devil, that's the baptize, That's the baptism we're going to get. But our righteousness comes through Jesus Christ, who died upon a cross. That walked among us in the flesh. Shed his blood upon a cross. Was buried. Three days rose again. For around 40, 41 days, he walked upon the earth with the disciples continuing to teach and that before he ascended into heaven. And he left us the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to live the life that he died for on the cross. That we can't do that without him. We can't do that without the Holy Spirit. We might try. 
but it ain't happening. And I'm here to tell you, you are looking at a guy who pastored a church for 12 years. We were in the ministry. I, I'll go one of these days. I'll go through all the different things that we did and how each one affected me. And we'll go through all that. But I use the excuse of a bad departure from a church. Not because of anything my wife and I had done or because of anything the people in the church had done. It had everything in the world to do with the organization that we were under that my wife and I didn't anyway, neither here nor there. So I used that excuse, right? That the Satan, the devil, used that excuse against me to keep me away from God and God's word for about 17 years, 16 years. But I'm back, baby. And with God's love and strength, I ain't going anywhere. I'm here to stay. 1 Timothy 6.11 says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. All you got to do to find righteousness is find Jesus Christ. Listen, he's there for the taking. You don't have to run and chase him down. He is knocking at the door. He is waiting for you to pray that prayer. He is no respecter of persons. He respects no man. But he loves every man. He's not willing that any should perish. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who are of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Philippians 1.11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. So I've got one more I want to go over with you real quick, and this is redemption. Webster says, in theology, the purchase of God's favor by the death, sufferings of Christ, the ransom or deliverance of sinners from the bondage of sin and the penalties of God's violated law by the atonement of Christ. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14, in whom, in, in whom, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of his sins. If you want to be redeemed, you have to go through and be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do on this earth no good deed, nothing other than being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ can you do to have eternal life. And let me tell you, when you find that, you're going to find a total relief, release, no more fear. Are you going to be perfect? Absolutely not. There, even though all these Christians are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, there's none of us perfect. Nobody. That's why we need the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why when we pray, we need to pray that our government, that our leaders would be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, that God would somehow intervene in their life and bring him to Jesus Christ so that we can get our country back to where it belongs. But i got news for you, folks. I want to read you 
I want to read out of Romans chapter 1. I'm going to begin in verse 25, or 24. It says, Wherefore God has gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into the, that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the nature, the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to their reprobate mind to those things which are not convenient. Now, listen, I'm here to tell you right now that God, I believe God has given over a lot of this country over to the reprobate mind. I'm just telling you right now. And it says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over the reprobate mind to those things which are, in, which are not covenant. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient, disobedient to parents. Hear that? Disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, and applicable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only to do the same but to have pleasure in them that do them they know what they're doing is wrong and they continue to do it anyway and continue to do it with the people they're doing it with that is no different than what we're looking at today America, you're not special. God destroyed the earth because of sin with Noah, with water. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. How much more are we today in our sin than any of those times in history? When today, not only are men laying with men, women laying with women, we have women trying to have their DNA changed to where they can become a man. Or we're having men having trying to get their DNA changed because God made a mistake and now they want to be a woman. I got news for you, Kat. God does not make mistakes. We do. God does not make mistakes. I'm going to say that one more time. God does not make mistakes. Mistakes. He created male and female. He created man and woman. There is one chromosome that a female is missing in order to be a man. God did that. Every DNA, every person in this world, their DNA is different. That cannot come from seawater. That cannot come from a big bang theory. That comes from a creator. Well, I guess we got a little excited in the shelter hold today. Listen, it's my prayer that you would know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Yeah, I too get wound up in things of today and what's going on in our government and I hear about all that's going on and the abortions that we that we allow to go on and all this other heresy and, and garbage that goes on. But we can see in God's word where he turns these folks over to a reprobate mind, turns them over to their loss. Well, I got news for you. Jesus is here. Jesus will help you. Jesus will heal you. 
And Jesus will give you the love and the change and the compassion in your heart that you need to love your neighbor. Hey, this is Big John G. This is the shelter hold. We'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>